Habari, friends. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And to those who are here, here maybe for the first time, I would like to um, introduce myself again. I have been a, have been a pleasure of um, trying to learn your language. It's such a beautiful language. And so um, to those who may be there for the first time, Habari, Gina Langu, Ni Angela Dennis, Nina Ferrara, Kukutana, not Ni, not Nini. <laughs> I hope I hope by by Sabbath I'll be able to be fluent. <laughs> um, towards the end of my um, presentation, um, before I say goodbye. I would like, I've been trying to search how to say goodbye in Swahili, but have not come across, um, have across haven't crossed a video to actually know. So um, what better source to, to know how to, to know a language by knowing someone who actually knows it. So um, I'm going to need your help at the end. Okay. Aiming high with the sower. As you can see, this is a picture of a tree that I had my son and I do um, in our nature art, in, in a nature art lesson and trying to um, uh, implement a, a, a devotional that I heard and put together for him since he's a visual learner uh, so that he can see what the tree represents when we look at Psalm 1, when we look at Psalm 1, verse 3. This is my son. His name is Adam. He is 10 years old, and um, we, I have been homeschooling him for about five years now, and um, he did go through the public school system in the beginning, but um, which has been positive in some ways because um, he has been able to to communicate and, and even though he was diagnosed with autism at age three, um, I was I was in denial at first because when a child child grows, it's within that first seven years of their life is when you want them to learn how to be a child. To not be forced on anything and just to learn how to play and to um, uh, create imaginary things. I mean, uh, um, not imaginary things, but, but um, learn, learn the real, real life to, to be able to, to interact with family, being able to interact with friends outside. And so um, I was a bit pressure. And so um, because of geographical locations and other, other personal issues, I wasn't able to homeschool him right away. And so um, I have been blessed through my five years of homeschooling and I have no regrets whatsoever because when you look at a tree what is it what's the first thing that that you need in planting the tree 
you need the seeds yes and so so um in in associating with with the tree to psalm one uh, chapter one verse three which says and let's read let's read it together if we can and he Amen. And so going back to our tree illustration, um, I have what you see on the bottom is roots. And the roots, the roots are like our feet. And so I wanted him to see that the roots are like feet. The trunk is, let's say, let's say the, the, um, the bark of the tree is like the skin on, on his body, on our body. The branches are like our arms and the leaves are like hands. And what, what the fruit produces is character. And so that's what we want to teach our children in character building. And what you see um, below is different character qualities in which a child can develop. Behold, a, a sower went forth to sow, as we may be familiar with the story, with the parable found in Matthew 13, verse 3. But we want to bring out that the teacher's work is to plant seeds. When we look at the parable in content, the teacher, the teacher will encounter many difficulties as he sows, as the sower in the parable um, demonstrated. When it was planted, when the seed was, was dropped on the wayside, the seed sown by the wayside represents the word of God as it falls upon the heart of an inattentive hearer. The seed falling on the wayside reminds, reminds one of a student who will not learn. You may have a student who may not want to learn and you have to find a way or pray, you have to pray um, without ceasing, constantly knowing what to do and how to communicate how to communicate with the child so that um, you can get that child to learn. Um, from, in my case, when I see my son doing something else, I will, engage in, I will engage with him just for that short time in whatever he's doing, whether he's playing his, with his trains, and then I will say, okay, it's time, it's time for us to do this, to, to, to go into our Bible study, our, our nature study. And, um, and so um, I, that, that's why I have a, um, his schedule board that to help him to, to know that this will come first and this will come next and then this will come following. So. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, it's good to have a schedule so that even, even when the student may not want to learn, um, you can have something substantial or visual to know that, that, um, that, okay, let's do this, and then we can do what you want to do a little later. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. When the, for the stony, stony road, the, the seed sown upon stony ground finds little deep, little depth of soil. The plant springs up quickly, but the root cannot penetrate the rock to find nutriment to sustain its growth, and it soon perishes. The stony ground hearer can also represent the student who hears then forgets what he had learned. And for this case, it's, it's good that we can um, um, repeat our lessons. If one way doesn't work, then try another way. 
um, some students may be visual learners and will on, on a, uh, several other slides you'll see that in different I'll talk about different styles of learning uh, for the thorn, thorny ground the the gospel seed often falls among thorns and noc noxious weeds which are poisonous and harmful to to the to the plant I mean, to the seed and if there is not a moral transformation in the human heart if old habits and practices and the former life of sin are not left behind if the attributes of satan are not expelled from the soul the wheat crop will be choked the thorns will come to be the crop and and will kill out the wheat and that's found in christ object lessons um, page 50 and 51. with the good soil the good ground hearer oh, sorry, um, didn't read the bottom part here. A student surrounded by weeds becomes caught, caught up with them and has not the time for the precious seed. The good ground hearer receives the word, not as the word of men, but as it is in, the, in truth, the word of God, found in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Only he who receives the scriptures as the voice of God speaking to him is a true learner. He trembles at the word, for to him it is, it is a living reality. He opens his understanding and his heart to receive it. On this slide, I wanted to bring out different st learning styles. You could have a student that is visual, who prefers using pictures, images, and spatial understanding. Um, and that's my son. He's, very, he's a visual learner. Uh, and my daughter, she's more auditorial, auditory. Uh, she likes music. She started singing scripture songs when she was, um, I would say, about six, six months. And then... Um, she was the first person to start singing, singing scripture songs before my son did. And so um, you would have st students who would prefer using sound and music. And I know that you, you a presenter has spoken about music. And so music can be a very intricate part in a child's learning. Uh, you may have a child that's verbal, who prefer using words, both in speech and writing. Physical kinesthetic, you may prefer using your body, hands, and sense, and, sense of, and sense of touch. There's logical, mathematical. Per, uh, child can be very good at reasoning or using logic. Uh, there's a social child who prefer to learn in groups or, or with other people. And there's a solitary who prefers to work alone and use self-study. Teaching to learn how to work independently is the goal. In unit studies style by having certain subjects together and other, others separate can also be um, ideal as well. Here we have a picture of the seed, the three parts of the seed. You have the embryo, the uh, the um, collagen and the seed coat. So what is the seed? The seed is the word of God. Christ came to sow the world with truth. He who had stood in the councils of God, his father who had dwelt in the innermost sanctuary of the internal could bring to men the pure principles of truth. Christ Object Lessons 37 through 38. And so we know that the tree equals the seed. Character equals the seed. For so we want our child to grow up with the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? 
Do we, do we know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Okay. Every seed brings forth fruit after its kind. Sow the seed under right conditions and it will develop its own life in the, pl in the plant. Receive into the soul by faith the incorruptible seed of the word and it will bring forth a character and a life after the solemnitude of the character and the life of God. And so what another idea you can do is if you have access to notebooks is create a character development note, notebook um, for those who may be using sunlight and any other curriculum that have character qualities that you can learn in character building. You can um, have a notebook for your child and as he's studying, he or she is studying the character can write about it in his or her book. Like the tree, parents, teachers, and students, what is our purpose of life? Is it to have the career you always wanted? Is it to have lots of money? Is it to get married and have a family? Is it to go to the best universities or college? Some argue that our purpose is to find happiness. Others say our purpose is to love others to become the best version of ourselves or to follow God's will. Still others say there is no purpose to life at all. I believe that our lives do have a purpose, each and every one of us, and that the clues are all around us, mostly in the Bible. You can see it through creation, and most of all, you can see it in the word of God. Amen? Amen. The purpose of life is found in the faith of Jesus. His God is my God. His Father is my Father. Jesus was the only begotten of the Father. The faith of Jesus is that he took God at his word and did it. He worships his Father because he is. He is his God. I follow the religion of Jesus. As we see... As we see in Galatians 2.20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And what is this religion of Jesus, who is the Son of Man that grew up in wisdom and in stature? As we look in Matt, uh, Micah 6, verse 8, says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. And I don't know if um, young people might, might know this, but um, this is a scripture song. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6, verse 8. Hosea 6, verse 6 says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. The knowledge of God is found in Exodus 34, 5 through 7, John 17, verse 3, and Proverbs 2, verse 5 and 6. Let's briefly take a look at them one by one. What we see in Exodus 34, 5 through 7 reads, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaim the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. 
Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Therefore, in Hosea 12, 6, we continue to see the purpose of, our, of life. It reads, Therefore, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the, king, the kingdom of God, sorry for the typo there, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Indeed, life is more than just eating food, clothing, and shelter. But God gave us his son to be our wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that we may be able to live life with family, neighbors, and God in power, love, and in sound mind. And in uh, additional scriptures here, see First, uh, first Corinthians 1.30 and 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, amen? amen, but of power and of love and of sound mind. We seek the following in his kingdom. Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In Titus 2, verse 11 through 14, also says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live so soberly, righteous, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and prefer and, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And in Titus 3, 3 through 8, says, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, dis disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and, and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of, of re regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen? This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men. In the 1828 Westbrook Dictionary says that word keep, there are two, two things that God wants us to keep, uh, to tend to, to have, to care <laughs> according to, accordingly. And that is found in Genesis 2 verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And in Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So he wants us to keep the commandments and to have the faith of Jesus. We are a prophetic people. Let us keep this in thought. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14. As we look at the second advent, the ultimate hope is to be ready for the soon return of Jesus. 
we will see and hear Jesus. He will come with a shout, the voice of God and the trump of God. He will come in the clouds. He will empty all of heaven. The angels and the, those captives he freed from the grave at his resurrection. Elijah, Enoch, and Moses will be with him. He go from east to west. He will send his angels to gather his saints. He will restruct the righteous sleeping dead. Then those who remain alive shall be changed. We will join the resurrection and Jesus in the air. Amen. Those who endure to the end of old earth's history must go through the great tribulation until the visible glory, audibly loud second advent of our Lord Jesus. The wicked will be dead and we will spend a thousand years in the new Jerusalem in heaven. Let us be ready. That is, this is not our world. It, in, it encourages us in John 14, 1 through, through 3, says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Revelation 20, 4, 6 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Christ, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Therefore prophecy thou shalt thou against them all these words and say unto them, The Lord shall ro roar from on high and utter his voice from the holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a great controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith, saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great will, will word, willwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be, all, be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be laminated, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung, dung upon the ground. The land 
which God promised to Abraham and his seed, according to Genesis 12, 1. And you can write these down if you are writing. Um, and you can look at these at your time if you like. Um, according to Genesis 12, 1, 7, 13, 12, uh, thir uh, chapter 13, 15 through 17, 15, verse 7 and 18, and chapter 17, Genesis 17, verse 8, was a type of the world, uh, Roman, uh, was a type of, was a type of a world. And Romans 4, 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. In Galatians 3, 7 through 9 says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. They will be blessed to be part of the first resurrection. They will afford the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 20, verse 6. But why is there a second death for the, for the wicked? They die at the second advent. The wicked die twice. The people of God will be kings and priests of God. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? 1 Corinthians 2, 6, verse 2. Revelation 1, verse 6 says, And hath made us kings and priests. So we will be kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I saw thrones. In Revelation 24 says, I saw thrones and they sat upon them, and judgment was given, given unto them. They reign with Christ a thousand years, judging the dead. Why a thousand years? What happens to the devil during the thousand years? As we see in Revelation 20, verse 2 through 3, um, and he led hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Where are the people of God from on earth? In Revelation 7 verse 9 says that after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Why will the devil not be able to deceive the nations? For the saints will be in heaven, and the wicked will be dead. The saints will judge as priests and king the wicked dead. The wicked dead will take part in the second resurrection. And so to end, may we find comfort in these words, saying, as we look at in the scope of homeschooling and preaching the everlasting gospel, the third angel's message. Worry is blind and cannot discern the future, but Jesus sees the end from the beginning. And in every difficulty, he has his way prepared to, to bring relief. Abiding in Christ, 
we can do all things through him who strengthens us. And that's me. most gracious to the most gracious loving father we thank you so much for this time together we pray dear father that you will continue to abide with us through your spirit and teach continue to teach us how to love and to um help our children to know what it means to love and to to have your fruits of your of your son's spirit and of yours which is also your spirit as well and so lord we thank you for your goodness and your mercies that that endures forevermore and may you continue to mold our hearts mold us in where you want us to be good parents and good caregivers for our children so that they can grow up in the same wisdom and stature as our sweet and loving friend Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and your, your love towards us. Continue to be with your children here in Kenya and may you continue to um, uh, show your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, God bless you and keep you till uh, the next presentation. Yes, and I want you all to teach me how to say goodbye. Kwaheri. 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 <laughs>